Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We've got to talk about our setup for late this week. We've been keeping a close eye on this pattern. It's still there, but don't expect a big storm out of this setup. It still looks like it's going to be marginal for our, our area, but it could be a bigger storm to the north and east. So let's review our winter weather forecasting rules. Um, you can see we follow those pretty strictly here, and you can see where we are right now. We are in the three to five day Outlook, because we're looking at a Friday night, Saturday morning kind of time frame. So 7 to 10 days out, we saw the pattern. It was there. 5 to 7 days, eh, kind of trending even, maybe down. Today, we're kind of at the point where I do think we're going to see some rain. It could mix with snow in parts of the area, especially east of I-77 at the tail end, and really more of a mountain event. We're not really close to any uh, amounts or details right now, but I'll talk a little bit about some of this. Um, in today's setup here. So the first thing I want to show you is the outlook for winter weather in the Carolinas. I like showing you this product because it works really well. We'll kind of show you how it works over time um, and show you how things are evolving. This is that product. You could see yesterday most of the Carolinas were in a 10 to 30 percent range. It's been cut down a little bit and notice where the, the focus is and I think this is really important because this is the area I think if we're going to see some snow at the tail end of the low tracking up the coast this is where we'll see it. In the mountains, this is more of a northwest flow event because we're going to basically have a nor'easter. Um, and as the nor'easter cranks up and moves up the coast, you can see where the problems are going to be. Um, areas from the Chesapeake, maybe the Tidewater region up into the northeast. And that will continue into Sunday where you see New England could absolutely get clobbered. So really high amounts going up in that direction. But it kind of gives you a hint of the type of storm we expect to see. So let me look real quickly here at our future gas. We'll kind of show you how this evolves through time. You can see the big sprawling Arctic high pressure system in the middle of the country. Um, and there's two pieces of energy. You'll hear me talk a lot about this. You'll hear a lot of meteorologists talk about this. And when we talk about northern stream and southern stream, the jet stream splits up in the winter. We have the polar jet, which drops south. That's the polar jet that really is the boundary, sometimes referred to as the polar front, which really defines the Arctic air from the normal continental air we have over us. So and then we have the subtropical jet, which is kind of our, our really warm, humid, juicy storm track that we have in the spring. When those two combine, you get our, your biggest storm. So what you're looking at here is a piece of energy in the northern stream coming down and a piece of southern stream energy. Now, when these two get together, we call it phasing. Where that phasing happens is really crucial to the type of winter storm you get. So we go through time and you can see kind of the pieces of energy start to develop a little bit uh, to the southeast of us, but it really looks like it's going to happen somewhere over the Carolinas and just to the southeast. The surface low, to me, looks like it's going to take shape more um, off the southeast coast and then really crank up here. And it's going to become what we call negatively tilted. When the low pressure is positively tilted, it's tilted this way. Neutral is like this. And when it tilts back, negative tilt. Why is negative tilt so important? You tend to pull in a whole bunch of moisture. The storm gets strong. It wraps in cold air and moisture and you get kind of the perfect setup for a big winter storm. But you see the development of this thing kind of along the coast. There is a band of rain or snow. That's why I say at the very tail end here, there might be a band of snow mixed with rain that develops on the back side of this. And it, we're getting pretty good agreement in most of the guidance. It's just a matter of location, kind of like your cone of uncertainty for hurricanes. Uh, is the low here? Is it here? Or is it here? Or is it here? Or is it here? So you've got kind of a range of possibilities and that would affect where this little band of snow goes. So that's why there's still a chance we could see some snow. I, I think maybe some flurries, maybe even some accumulation possible. But you see it kind of cranking up near the coast. Now, again, in all transparency, this is the GFS, which um, has done a better job with the last couple of systems, if we're, if we're being totally honest. But I'm not looking at just one model. I'm just giving you this as a general idea because I kind of go with an ensemble look, and there's still a lot of uncertainty. So if you blend all the guidance together, um, you're probably looking at more of an impact somewhere in here um, if the low is anywhere near the coast. Now, if it shifts further offshore, it becomes less of an issue. So, so let's talk about some of the probabilities of snowfall here in the Charlotte area. One of the things we'll look at is the probability of one inch snow. Let's look at the European ensemble. So you kind of see where this is set up here. Um, the highest probabilities, you know, 70% plus uh, right in here. Now back towards the Piedmont, we still got anywhere from uh, 10 to 30% chance of getting an inch of snow. That's still significant. And you know, I would still keep an eye on that. That's not been trending down or up. It's kind of been just holding steady. You see the mountains with the best chance of snow. Let's look at the ensembles 
for Charlotte. The average of all of them, you know, most of them have some type of snow. There's nothing blockbuster. When your high end is only three inches, that kind of tells you this is not going to be a big deal. Um, so the average is like a half an inch. So it, it's not that big a deal. And the GFS, which has done better with the last couple storms, maybe flakes a trace. It's not really off the charts either. So let's look at these pieces of energy because it, the million dollar question is going to be what do these two pieces of energy do as they move east? You kind of see them northern branch, southern branch. Watch as they go east and then crank up. And you heard me say positive and negatively tilted. Well, this is a good way to look at it. So right here, you see the orientation of this is like this. That's a positive tilt. But watch what happens as it gets to the coast. You're going to see it take on a negative tilt, which is back towards the west. Watch it crank up and you see it kind of tilting. That's when it starts to become really strong. So that's why you think the northeast probably going to get the lion's share of whatever system moves in here. And just, you know, for fun, we can look at the GFS showing about a half an inch average with the last couple of runs. The Schreff plumes, which are always fun. If you look at the type of precipitation, um, there is a little bit of snow in here, but the rain chances kind of win out. If we look at total snow, and I'll kind of slide this over, um, you know, the mean of the of this is about three tenths of an inch. So you kind of get the idea. There's nothing is showing a huge storm for our area. Everything is in that kind of like we could see some snowflakes, maybe a half an inch. So that's a very minor event for us. It really does not look to be that big of a deal and you know number one question i'll get after this could that change absolutely but we've had quite a few runs pretty consistently on the coast if something's going to be a fly in the ointment um, this thing would have to develop down here to our southwest we'd have to see development here somewhere in here or closer to us attract to us anything that develops out here even if it is close to the coast still is not a good snowstorm setup for us um, you know i posted yesterday that carolina crusher that thing was developing to the west. It cranked up as it was moving over the Carolinas. To get an event like that, you would see it happening to the west. Back in 2000, unfortunately, a lot of meteorologists didn't see it happen because they were over-reliant on the guidance. So oftentimes what I do in those situations, and it's one of the things I think all meteorologists should do, when I'm looking at the guidance, I will start looking to see how it's doing today. Um, for instance, you know, I talked about the two pieces of energy coming together. The first thing you got to look at is starting tomorrow and probably Thursday is look at where the guidance has this piece of energy. Is that piece of energy in the in the spot it thought it was going to be? Is it over Texas? Is it in the same position as the northern piece here? If you start seeing that those aren't lining up with the current model guidance, that's a red flag. And that didn't happen back in 2000 with the Carolina Crusher. People didn't really verify what was going on to the west. And it caught a lot of people off guard. Because of that storm, though, thankfully, people learn lessons and you don't make those same mistakes twice. So you can see the system cranking up. And we've just had too much consistency with the setup for it to be anything too crazy. So, you know, when I look at this one inch snowfall for us, I really think this is this is the time frame we're looking at, you know, for getting maybe a dusting to an inch We'll see. You know, we'll go through time there. There's the probability. So, again, I think we might see some snowflakes late Friday night, but it doesn't look to be a big deal. Of course, I'll have updates throughout the week, and we'll break this down a little bit more. It is kind of fun watching these two pieces of energy come together. And as you might imagine, when you have two moving parts, timing out where they're going to come together is the most difficult part. And when they do that, that's when you kind of know what's going to happen. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. I'll see you coming up tonight at 4, 5, 6, and 11 on WCNC Charlotte.